What's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And um, this week should have a pretty interesting week once again. Um, we do have a triple witching week, which is um, when three different assets are all expiring at the same time, like options, you know, futures, and things like that. And um, we also have a FOMC meeting. Um, if you don't know, we're going to be, you know, listening to Jerome Powell and hoping we get a hint at. Um, Maybe, you know, rate hike slowing or something that's going to show us, you know, maybe um, the Fed's going to slow down on their fight for inflation. Um, so far, we haven't really seen too much of the data to imply that, but, you know, you never know. Um, you know, a couple months worth of data is just really not enough to, you know, really give us the hint. But, you know, if we can hear something directly from the Federal Reserve, maybe, you know, we can get a much better hint you know, on how to make our next move, uh, etc. So let's get into our first setups here. Um, just a heads up, we're going to be looking at four short setups. Um, personally, I think, look, you need a little bearish. You know, you maybe look, you know, for puts on these. And then we have one um, call setup. You know, you'd be looking for longs. So our first one here, we're looking at Netflix. Um, we do have a clear, like, rising wedge forming. Um, this would be unconfirmed, obviously, because it's not, you know, breaking down the wedge as such. But you do have a clear line of, you know, resistance here. And this is actually a third test resistance. So the third test on trend lines is actually really good. Um, you can see right here, you got test one, test two, test three. And you see test three on the uptrend, really nice move. Likewise, you get, you know, test one. You can even count maybe this one as a test. Um, you know, if we move the trend line over a little bit, count that as a test too if you wanted. Um, just depends on, I like to use the wicks. So we do have a clear area of resistance here. Look at this reversal candle, nasty bearish. Um, looks like a hammer, shooting star, whatever you want to call it. Um, you do have a big seller's wick at the top, showing there was pressure all the way from this high down into the close. Um, you do have a little mini gap here as well. Let me draw that real quick. So with gaps, um, obviously it's an area where there wasn't any supplier demand. Um, price totally skipped through it, so this is a lack of liquidity area, and um, they tend to fill pretty quick um, to kind of catch back up, you know, with those orders that hadn't been filled in this area. So look at it as, you know, literally somebody jumping off a cliff, right? <laughs> I mean, you got nothing holding you right here, and it fills up, and then you finally land on the platform. And it holds up. So yeah, um, you got test number one, test two, test three. Like I said, you'd be looking for a move down to the next trend line, and it'd probably try to curl up about there. You do also have a little pivot right here, so you can maybe look about there too. Um, we can't really go beyond that, and we can't call this a rising wedge yet because it's not confirmed. It's not breaking the uptrend line, etc. So this is kind of like a um, you're looking ahead using this move off the resistance as a projection to move down to here and hopefully that makes sense so yeah we're gonna be looking at puts on this probably gonna stick to like day trades this week if you're going to do swing trades i would stick to you know option contracts that are going to have you know 30 to 60 days of expiration that can deal with the volatility of the fomc meeting because there's going to be a big move in either direction so all the technical analysis that we're looking at here i mean it can get blown out of the water so keep that in mind and trade safe Next, we're going to FXI. So this is a China large cap ETF. So this has all like your big name um, Chinese names all grouped into a, a weighted F ETF. So I'm sure you got like Alibaba, you know, um, JD, PDD, stuff like that. You know, the large cap China stocks, um, probably like Tencent, you know, those names. So we do have Fibonacci retracement tool here. If you don't know, this measures the percent of a move that stocks retrace. So you got this high down to low, and there's your Fibonacci levels. You got the 23.6%, 38.2%, the 50%. So this is your halfway point. And then finally, what they consider the golden ratio, which is the 61.8%. And a lot of times, um, stocks will find resistance here. Sometimes they'll go over, bounce back test, and rip off of there. Um, but right now with FXI, you can see we do have a clear area of resistance right off the 61.8%. 
and write off supply. That's a pretty big supply. This did lead to a big green date, leading to a gap down with a lot of follow through selling afterward. So if something clearly happened in this nice imbalance in this area, um, and you also have the 200 EMA. So you got three areas of confluence. You got the supply, you got the 61.8, and you also have the 200 EMA. So a clear sign of resistance in my opinion. We can even add a trend line up here and right here. And you can see, I mean, it's getting tight, kind of like a rising wedge, what we're just looking at um, on Netflix, just a little bit tighter. And, you know, since China does trade in a different time zone, you will see a lot of gaps on these Chinese names. So that's why you see all the um, price spread out and you see these huge gaps. Different time zone is going to result in, you know, a way different, um, sometimes even a way different cash open than we would have on the U.S. stock market. You can just see, I mean, just crazy swings, crazy gaps. So just something to be mindful of and, you know, China's political nature right now is, <laughs> I mean, it's just insane. You know, they do have riots and, you know, a lot of uh, protesting going on. So along with, you know, COVID lockdowns and all that good stuff. So you just got to be careful with China names. But they do give a lot of good volatility to trade. So ideally, um, with this FXI setup, you'd be looking for this trend line to break. So maybe if you want to wait for confirmation first, this is still forming. And since it's so tight, maybe you don't want to enter right away. Maybe look for a little bit of downside. We're going to be looking for a breakdown of this trend line. And that will give you a good confirmation of a flush. Probably down to this 50% fib, which is also this little pivot low here. So yeah, another rising wedge that you can keep on watch. Along with your three areas of confluence, you got supply, you got 200 EMA, and also trend line resistance and 61.8. So, I mean, you could even count that as four areas of confluence if you wanted. Um, one thing you do got going against you, KDJ is still giving positive signal, MACD is still giving positive signal, but... Um, that's just, you know, a little extra confirmation, I guess you would use an indicator. This, we're just focusing on price and, you know, the moving averages, you know, FIB levels. Stuff where, you know, price is real time. So to kind of piggyback on that, I see real time because uh, indicators actually, most indicators are lagging. Um, they're using past price data, you know, implement into the code and give you your indicator. So, so, so far we're looking at Netflix, um, rising wedge forming, not confirmed. Same with FXI, rising wedge not confirmed. But, um, FXI, you could wait for the breakdown. Netflix, it looks like it's already giving you an entry back down to the trend line. So that's where they differ. Next, we're going to Starbucks. So there's a lot of like rising wedges forming right now, you know, trend line breaks and stuff that looks like it's about to break down, which is why I'm watching mostly puts this week. Um, and along with the seasonality, we'll see there is a dip up to the 15th. So uh, with Starbucks here, you got test one, test two, three, four. This is actually a fifth test. It looks like it uh, faked out a breakout came back within the trend line resistance while also having uptrend line where it does have three tests you got test one two three it bounced here and now it's breaking down the trend line so ideally um, you'd be looking for you know we can even remove this. this is actually a demand area we can mark so you got a rally base rally demand zone um, ideally that would be your general area for a price target uh, if this wants to fall. So it'll probably come out here, curl up about there. But you can see, I mean, price is exiting the uptrend line, and you do have this really long area of uh, trend line resistance. So it's kind of like a rising wedge, but I wouldn't really um, call it that, just because these diameters are, you know, kind of far from each other. So another thing you do have going for you, too, um, on this bearish setup is that you get the MACD crossing down. But like I said, it is a lagging indicator. So sometimes you get a MACD cross down, you see stocks bounce, fake everybody out, and then, um, you know, fall later. So, you know, it's not always going to be right away the MACD crosses, you're going to get a flush. So that's why I think it's important to use, you know, trend lines and stuff that's kind of recent, right, and uh, real time. Stuff is more focused on um, price at that exact time. And that's what trend lines and support and resistance, they all do. Um, Netflix, FXI, S-Books, all puts. And um, pretty close price targets. You're not going to be aiming for anything crazy this week. All you can do is play the levels, play what's in front of you. So, yeah, just make sure you trade safe. SLV is another one. I know these rising wedges are probably driving you crazy. Here's another one. You got test number one, test two. This is actually the third test. So you'd be looking for a confirmation candle showing, you know, sellers did it indeed take control. You might see that about the cash open. Um, you'll want to see the U.S. dollar, you know, rising and stuff like that because um, the dollar will move inverse to metals. Um, so when the dollar is falling, you'll see gold and silver, um, sometimes copper, they'll come up. Um, when you see, 
you know, you'll see the opposite, uh, you know, in the opposite scenario. So when the dollar's rising, um, you'll see, you know, metals, copper, gold, etc. they all fall. So this would just be the same thing, kind of as Netflix. You'd just be looking for a move back to the trend line. Probably try to curl about there. And then if you wanted to wait for the rising wedge to break, um, there is another trade there. Otherwise, um, I mean, when it comes back down to the trend line, I mean, you could even, if you're bullish, you could even look for a curl up about there and try to, you know, maybe look at calls or something. Just going off the trend line resistance here, um, I do want to see a rejection. I think it looks more preferable than going long here. So all we're doing is just playing the trend line and um, playing the level. So you just want to make sure, you know, you are waiting for confirmation of sellers. You're going to see that, you know, about the cash open or maybe the night before on the futures. Um, something that's showing you that, you know, maybe sellers are starting to kick in, look for volume and um, pay attention to that dollar, especially. So yeah, puts on that. So that's our four put setups. Um, all clear. I mean, they're basically all trend line resistance, you know, rising wedge, etc. So just make sure you, you do wait for that confirmation showing that, um, you know, the trend line resistance is still uh, valid. So next we'll go into lift. This is actually a falling wedge setup. Um, that is actually kind of breaking out. If we go down to the four hour, you do have your four hour candle that broke out here. You got a, a confirmed close outside of it. Um, now you'd want to go ahead and see, you know, see it back test the line, you know, curl up after back testing, head into this little, you want to see it heading up into this 11.59 level. And also that meets with the four hour 50 EMA, um, which is a clear area of resistance up here, clear area of resistance right here. Had a little trouble right here, but once it got over, you can see it does find a nice balance to the upside. So, you know, the 4 hour 50 EMA is also a good tool to read trends. So we are under it. That does put you at risk, but you do have the 4 hour MACD crossing up. You do have the KDJ crossing up, and you have your breakout. So this is kind of like a counter trend wedge reversal. Um, could be good for calls. I'll be looking at, you know, calls on this maybe, depending on how growth wants to do. So if you want to pay attention to high growth names, you'll you know look at maybe like the ARK ETF, um, pay attention to you know, uh, Uber, UPST, names that aren't really pulling out any profits, but are um, high growth focus. And a lot of those names, you know, they do report in a loss on earnings per share. So uh, the names like the large caps like Netflix and uh, I mean like Apple, all them, you know, they're they're flipping a profit. So. That's what makes them different than high growth. They are tech stocks, but they're not high growth. They're not something you're investing in, you know, pre-profits. They're something you're investing before they actually achieve that, you know, in hopes of when they do start, you know, getting profits and are able to reward their shareholders more, you'll see that reflect in the equity price. So just consider left a high growth name. It is risky. We're in a rising interest rate environment. So um, just make sure, you know, you're looking at other high growth names, see if they're catching a bid, etc. So yeah, that's our five setups. Um, these are our five individual names. You know, I like to trade like the SPY ETF, uh, trade the SPY ETF, you know, QQQ, um, really any of the ETFs because I like how they move. The options are cheap. So we'll go ahead and go into ES, which is the S&P 500. We'll go into the NQ, which is the NASDAQ, or pretty much QQQ, and then RTY, which is, you know, basically the IWM, which is the Russell 2000. So let's go into ES first. All right, so the ES, S&P 500, basically is SPY. Um, I like using these for the Sunday night videos because the futures do open on Sunday night and we can get a little insight into how the pre-Sunday um, move is before the Monday open. So with ES and SPY, um, these are two clear areas of resistance and support. We got 39.44 and also uh, 41.42. So ideally for bears, you're going to see... oh. Also, we have this 50 EMA. So this is the daily 50 EMA, daily 200 EMA. Ideally, bears are going to see it get under here. Um, Bulls are going to see it curl up about here, head back up to the 200 EMA area, hopefully maybe get through that. And then you really can't go past this resistance yet because you don't know how it's going to react to it. So this is your trading range at the moment. And it will depend on the FOMC meeting and also see how the options expert is on Friday. So yeah, those are your two areas to focus on um, trend line wise. Which is my favorite tool you did break it we broke the trend line you got test one test two test three came up for the fourth um broke down but holding the 50 ema like glue and also this uh pivot low came back up kind of back tested the general area and ended up coming back down on friday you do have a negative macd crossover and you also do have a negative kdj crossover and that kdj crossover actually came way earlier 
So the KDJ is more like real time, but sometimes you will give it, um, you will get false signals from it. MACD is kind of lagging, but um, sometimes the signals are a little bit more solid. Like you can see MACD on here stood in a buy signal way longer than the uh, KDJ did. You can see a lot of the cross downs on the KDJ happened here, um, happened right here, happened right here, while the MACD did stay in a consistent buy signal up until recently. So that's the only difference. Uh, they do have different parameters and they're coded differently. Um, but general, generally they are pretty similar because you're looking for a cross down, looking for a cross down, looking for a cross up, looking for a cross up. And um, both, of you, both of these indicators will give you that. So this is your trading range. Bulls, you want to see it hold up here. Bears, you want to see it break down, um, break the 50 EMA, and also stay under the trend line. I did have QQQ puts last week. Uh, I was able to exit those for a decent gain. And then I was waiting you know, for it to maybe come up and back test before re-entering puts. And uh, I did enter some spy puts for January expiration. Um, entered a little bit higher, maybe like up here. Um, they're only up like 5% so far because, you know, they are a little bit further out. So, you know, it's not going to move as quickly. So we do need to get under this um, key level, you know, to start seeing those gain a little bit more. If it does flush the level, you have a rally base rally demand here. So it's rally, creates a base, huge rally, which is this is actually on the CPI, um, the last CPI print. And, you know, after that CPI print, we did chop around because people weren't, you know, sure if that was like, you know, a sign for the Fed uh, to slow down on raising or what. So... Um, that's why, you know, now, um, this FOMC meeting is going to be so huge. You know, how are we going to respond to the data that came out? Uh, what is Jerome Powell going to say? Are we going to slow down on rate hikes? Um, how long are we going to keep them raised for? Um, most people are assuming it's going to be up until 2023, but you never know. But yeah, right now, I mean, the economy is going to start seeing a lot more slow growth. You'll start seeing, you know, big companies and their earnings start to deplete a little bit. So, you do have to be careful uh, going long in this environment. You know, maybe try to get the lows. Um, don't buy up here. Wait for the VIX, you know, to get overextended to the upside. Um, you might overpay on options, but, you know, you are getting a decent price because you're buying at lows. But you are buying with elevated premium when the VIX goes higher. So um, if this level does break, probably head back down to this rally base, rally demand. Crow up about there. Um, that's about as far as I can go for the bears. Um, bulls, if it holds up, I mean, the farthest I could put you is you know probably at the back end of this trend line or the 200 EMA area which just goes straight across here and then you know maybe it could curl up after that and hit back up to that big resistance so yes yeah, the ES spy S&P 500 next we'll go into the NQ oh I'm sorry let's go into the seasonality for the ES uh, for SPX so SPX spy ES all the same um, season X just offers the SPX um, the S&P 500 instrument for free so i go ahead and use that for the seasonality chart you can see we do have december 12th to the 16th this is our trading week here's the 72 years of back data we got the midterm elections um year selected so you got 2022 2018 2014 etc and you can see we do average a what is that 0 0.43 percent return so we could have a little dip this week um seasonality is pointing towards that i would not doubt it um, to see another dip before maybe trying to rally up into Christmas, but um, we'll have to see. So yeah, I, I am leaning a little bit more bearish biased. Um, I could be wrong. Seasonality is not always going to be right. Your technicals are not always going to be right, but all you can do is play what's in front of us and you know try to put the uh, puzzle pieces together. So NQ. So this is the Nasdaq. Get rid of this trend line. I don't know why I added that there. Do that. All right, you got test one, test two. Tried to do a test three, broke similar to the ES. Maybe not as clean as the ES. ES did have a clear three, four tests before breaking down. So um, NQ looks a little bit more choppy. We draw a trend line here. You can see it, you know, trying to hold up. You got test one, test two, test three. This is kind of like a support. So ideally for the bears, you want to see it get under, what is this pivot low? So use the magnet, get the precise. That's 11,537. So we're going to see it get under 11,500 um, if you want to, you know, kind of round it up. And also get under this trend line, fill this whole it sell, or fill this whole buy imbalance area, and, um, you know, head into this little drop base rally demand. So it's a, or I'm sorry, rally base rally demand. So this is a rally, creates a base, huge rally, just like ES. So um, that would be your price target for tech if it did want to break down. Um, that's about as far as I can put you because I don't know how it's going to react to demand. You know, same if it was running up into supply. I wouldn't know, you know, for the bulls how much higher it could go because I don't know how it's going to react to supply. 
and you can see why. Um, I mean, once it came up here, the NASDAQ, once it came up to this yellow area that I just added, um, you know, the 12,200 area, I mean, you don't know what it's going to do past that. So you, you can really only use this as your, you know, max short-term price target. You know, if it hadn't hit this yet and this was your trading range, you'd this was as far as you could go. And so you see a break over, um, make a base, and then go higher. So that's all trading is, making sure this holds, making sure that holds, making sure this breaks, making sure that breaks. And, um, yeah, that's, that's trading. That's all it is. So you just you got a checklist, you make sure that your levels are, hold, are holding or breaking, and um, go about your trade. All you can do is take the risk and, um, you know, risk your money. That's all you can do. Um, if you don't take the risk, you know, you might not get the reward. So learn technical analysis, learn what mo works most of the time. It's not going to be 100%, but, you know, history has proven that, you know, these technical analysis setups, I mean, they do pay off pretty good um, if you follow them. So yeah, we're going to be looking for that level to flush. Bulls, they're going to be looking for that to hold. You do have this trend line burden in the way, the uptrend line. Because, um, you know, if it does want to come back up, it could just reject off the back end. So bulls, you're going to see it, you know, reverse here. Literally reclaim over the trend line, show that it's worthless, and head back up to resistance. Um, and you see that happen sometimes. And that can happen with Jerome Powell speaking, so... Just trade careful, maybe stick to day trades, swing trades. Obviously, you're going to want to see um, 30 to 60 day expiration at max. Or, I'm sorry, at minimum. Next, we'll go into the RTY. So this is the small mid calves. This is the Russell 2000. Oh, actually, added a second demand zone. So, this is our rally based rally demand zone. Um, it's inside of that. So, I, I don't want to be too bearish here. Because um, there's a chance that you know it can chop around in this area, try to make a base. Um, you can see that the other indexes we covered, the ES and NQ, they hadn't reached that demand area yet uh, pre-CPI. So um, there's always a chance, you know, that this can hold up here. One thing the bears do have going for them, broke trend line very clearly. It's had multiple days of selling, went under the 50 EMA, and also has the MACD cross to the downside, um, along with the KDJ down here also crossed. So yeah, um, maximum, the bears, I could put you, you know, at demand zone low. Um, bulls, if it does want to, you know, stop halfway in this demand zone, uh, like it maybe puts you at the 50 EMA, you need to see where it goes from there. If it can get above, you know, it can head back up to this general area of resistance. So you do kind of have this um, pretty decently wide trading range that could, you know, it could stay in for the next couple of weeks and months. You got your maximum low at 17.59, and then obviously, you know, your maximum high of you know, 1913. But you also have the 200 EMA to worry about. Um, short term, you have to worry about the 50 EMA. And um, bears do have this demand zone to be worried about. So, no clear setup on this at the moment. Bulls do have an argument to maybe buy inside demand for a counter trend reversal back up. But otherwise, I mean, you know, stick to day trades. Uh, maybe wait for, you know, the VIX to go a little bit higher if you want to buy calls or something. Or, I mean, just wait, you know, for Jerome Powell to speak. You know, let the market hash it out for a couple days, and then, you know, maybe you can find an entry or some more clarity after the fact, you know, after prices settle down a little bit. Because, um, I mean, entering before the volatility, it can be very stressful. Um, you do want to go ahead and, um, you know, maybe go small on your position size, etc. But, yeah. So, that's our three indexes. We went over the ES, S&P 500, SPY, the NQ, QQQ, uh, NASDAQ. RTY, you know, the Russell 2000, IWM, etc. So, next we'll go into the VIX. So, the VIX, we were looking for the 19 area last week to um, hold up, make a base, and head back to 2264. Did exactly that, 2264. I got from this level um, these two days. You can see Tuesday and Wednesday, um, November 29th through the 30th. Um, and now it is trading a little bit over that. So, if you're bearish, I mean, it looks decent for you here because um, it did close over that. And the 22 average close did drop a little bit down to 25.87. Um, I really don't feel like the VIX will fall too much until it retests the 2022 average or at least one of these moving averages. And then maybe it'll, you know, reverse back down and start selling off again because um, it completed the meme regression. We'll just have to see how it reacts once it gets all the way up here. It seems like, you know, bull step in 
and um, you know, send equities higher and VIX lower. That's and you get a nice reversal candle, kind of like how you see over here and up here. Um, that'll give you confirmation that you know it's gonna head back down from the from the you know average and go back down to test the lows. So yeah, um, bulls obviously you're gonna want to see it. You know, reject this 22.64 area, head back down to 19. Um, Bull, our bears you're going to want to see it head back up to the moving averages 2022 average close etc bears do have this macd crossover to the upside so that could st send stocks a little bit lower showing volatility is raising again kdj is crossing to the upside also giving you another signal of that um we'll show you the data real quick just so you know that this average is legit um i manually found this myself i plug in every single close for for 2022 because this year has just been different um, we've had very elevated volatility, thus giving us a 25.87 um, average close, which you can see down here. And it's a really good meme regression target, if you didn't know. So when it got up to 35, we were looking for it to fall about there, head back to the average when it was you know, around 27, 26, did exactly that. Um, next, we were looking for it to come down to 19 before you know, scaling inputs, did exactly that, went with QQQ, I even had XLF puts. Uh, bounced off 19 now heading back to the average so you can see once it gets too high it's going to mean regress once it gets too low it's going to mean regress back to averages and that's kind of how you you know price in volatility um, either going higher or lower and you know you can not really exactly predict the market but you know you'll know that eventually um, volatility is going to come back up again or down if it's too high and that kind of gives you um idea on your option premiums and um, how much you're paying, if you're overpaying, underpaying, etc. Uh, 2264 is the focus. Either look for it to reject here um, or go higher. Personally, I mean, it looks like due to the MACD and closing over, it looks like it could go a little bit higher. So, I mean, I could just be biased um, looking at these setups. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that looks like it could get resistant soon. So that's why I'm, you know, looking at majority of puts. But obviously, I mean, you guys know I'm going to trade whatever. Um, I trade the Camarilla pivot strategy mainly. It's my main source of like income in the market. Um, so I day trade like the SPX, the SPY a lot and stuff like that. But I really like these individual names for day trades sometimes, um, especially for swing trades. And that's why I show them to you on the daily time frame. So the DXY, you can see it's actually up 0.22%. Futures are down a little bit. So that could be why we're down. Um, currency traders starting to buy in. But you can see, I mean, we do have a positive MACD signal on the DXY, which is not promising because um, it's been in a sell signal all the way from October. So, I mean, it's definitely not good for, for bulls. Also, this 104.63 area has been a level of focus for us. Um, and you can see, I mean, I got it from this over here. So that 104.63 came from this area. It's just a general area of support made a base in the general area the only problem that the bears um have because you know if you're a bear you do want the dollar to go up that's why i say the bears i'm not talking about this in general i'm talking about bears on equities you're going to see it get back over the 200 ebay make a base on there and head back into the 107 resistance areas and the 107 resistance areas comes from this pivot comes from this pivot and then eventually um it's going to run into the 50 ebay which is your next moving average um, bears, you're going to see it do exactly that. Get over the 200 EMA. Bulls, I mean, if you don't get under here soon, I mean, the dollar could start skyrocketing. So you want to get it back under 103s. Head back to that 102 level, or that 103 flat area I covered. I'll even uh, zoom out and show it to you again. So your 103s, um, which I think will be tested eventually, your 103s is coming from this 2020 peak. So this is when COVID first came out, dollar rocketed before Fed policy totally just slammed our dollar um, into oblivion. And you can see once the Biden administration came back, uh, came into office, you know, about 2021, I mean, dollar started to skyrocket because, uh, I mean, like it or not, the Fed um, during Trump era, I mean, they were printing a lot of money um, in order to support our, you know, our United States um people so we did you know have people out of work um we had a lot of you know sickness going around etc businesses were closing so we did do a stimulus plan um along with the fed you know putting massive amounts of bonds and mortgage-backed securities on their balance sheet um another thing you know with all the closures and the reopening again that will all contribute to inflation 
um, thus resulting in our skyrocketing dollar. So this level from 22, you're going to see it come back down eventually if you're bullish on equities. Um, we're probably trying to curl up about there. But um, it's kind of like a little bit far away. So obviously short term, if you're a bull, you want to see the dollar just get back under 104. Um, and that can bring it back down to 103. So right now it's not looking too promising. Uh, the MACD signal is a big, uh, that's really giving it away for me. Just because this signal stayed in a cell since October, um, you know, that's a pretty decent amount of time and it's pretty accurate. So we'll have to see. Um, this would just be more like an oversold reversal, and it will depend on the Federal Reserve, um, you know, coming this week. So we'll see what they have to say. Trade safe once again. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X Trades YouTube channel. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this and get it out to y'all. Thank you.